and on my feet. Yeah. I'm like, Jesus, are y'all with me? Yeah. Forgetting out all his benefits. Yeah. Move me up here so they can see it. Who forgives all your what? Iniquities. That means all your sins. Some of your sins? Oh, oh look, look. Who heals all your diseases? Some of your diseases? Your diseases and your diseases, anything that's not easing you. God is concerned. He wants to heal you. By the stripes of Jesus, we were made whole. Amen? Amen. Who redeems what? Your life from what? Destruction. All your destructive behavior from the past that the enemy tries to use against you, God says, I've redeemed it. I'm going to use it for my glory. You had to go through it because I'm going to use it for your purpose and your destiny. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. Not bad things. Bad, some bad got to happen. No, God crowns you with good things. Everybody say good things. See, some of y'all are looking for money and sometimes he's just getting you around some good people. How many know good people is better than having money? Are you with me? You know, you can have all the money, but if you don't have no friends. I'm not talking about people that want to go out with you when you had the money. I'm talking about people that, you know, I, know, I tell this all the time. I tell the men this all the time. I know my wife loves me because when we were a missionary, we didn't have nothing. When God spoke to me to give up my IBM degree and God spoke to her to give up our Honeywell degree and, and, and not go to law school when Honeywell was going to pay for that. And we went into full-time ministry and then later God connected us in marriage some six years later. And we didn't have nothing. We didn't have nothing. You know, I want, we didn't have anything but Jesus. And I remember $1,000 a month was a good month. Are y'all with me? Yes. So when I went into real estate and business broke and I became a top producer and I was making about $20,000 a month, my first uh, uh, sale was $40,000 in a dollar commission in, in 60 days. When I got that, praise God, I knew, and, and it just kept on rolling after that. I knew she wasn't there for the money, amen? Because there's so many years she was with me when I didn't have anything. So I could just lay the check in her hand, and I trusted her. I didn't have to worry about her running. Praise God, her name's on all my account. Are y'all with me? She tells you, when we argue, I'll be like, look, I don't want to argue with nobody else but you. I don't like that we're arguing, but I, I, I love you. Are y'all with me? The Bible talks about in, 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 in Proverbs 31 uh, that, that, that when you find a virtuous woman, uh, her husband, he puts his trust in her. It's trust in her. I trust her. Amen? Thirdly, let's get, are you ready for this? Stop giving a voice to your discouragement and start giving a voice to your encouragement. Yeah. Stop, number one, repeating the lies of the devil. When he speaks something to your mind, speak opposite. He says you're not going to make it. I just know now when the enemy tells me I'm not going to make it, I know to say I am going to make it in the name of Jesus. Because he's a liar. And what a liar is, the truth is the opposite of a lie. Yeah. Are you with me? When we lost our daughter, the enemy said, you can't survive this. 95, 98% of the people that lose their child end up in divorce. I say, devil, you are a liar. We will make it. We will make it strong. We will become better, not bitter. Are y'all with me? Yeah. The enemy said, you're going to be a bitter old man. I said, no, I'm going to be a better old man. Yeah. Are you with me? I'm going to love my wife even more. We're going to trust each other. We're going to believe. Are y'all with me? Yeah. You got to speak the word. Call those things that be not as though they were. Start speaking the promises of God. Stop speaking out of fear and start speaking in faith. Forsaken all, I trust him. Stop talking about the problems and start talking about the solution. Let me say that again. Start talking about the solution and stop talking about the problem. Find out what the word of God has to say about your situation and start speaking it rather than your feelings. Well, I feel like I know we're doing all of this, and I know God is real, but I feel like I'm still going to fail. Well, stop talking about what you feel like. The Bible says we walk by faith and what? Not by sight. Amen? Fourthly, meditate. Everybody say meditate. meditate. See, a lot of us, we meditate on BET. We meditate on CNN. We meditate on Fox News. We meditate on everybody. Amen? Used to be Oprah at 4 o'clock every day. Now it's uh, Kathy Curry. I don't know if you watch her. Wendy Williams. And Are you with me? Stop meditating on all this foolishness, amen, and what Beyonce's doing, what she's not doing with her child. What Kanye and North Star, whatever that child name is, poor thing. <laughs> and start meditating on the Word of God, amen? 
Hallelujah. Jay-Z and, 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 and Beyonce, they got their own problems. Amen? Yeah. And how many know you got yours too? Yeah. So let's meditate on the Word of God. The Bible says, let's say meditate, the fourth point is meditate on the Lord. One of the Hebrew words for meditate literally means to murmur or speak. Speak to yourself, murmur to yourself the promises of God over and over and over and over. Everybody say over and over and over and over and over. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. By the, you still going to feel it in your body? By the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. By the, somebody, you think you have to have a whole bunch of scriptures. You just need to get one scripture and just and knock the devil out with it. Amen? The Bible says, if, my, if I'm saved, I shall be saved and my whole household. Yeah. I shall be saved and my whole household. I shall be saved and my whole household. I shall be saved I, and my whole Keep declaring it and decreeing it to yourself. Amen? This way you speak to yourself about the things in your life. Everybody meditates, but often it's on the wrong thing, on the wrong person, or with the wrong focus. Get in focus on what you need to be meditating. You know, he, he ain't going to change because he was like this all the time. He never going to change. He's going to be the same. She was a hoe when I met her. She's going to be a hoe. I... Okay, you think it. Don't, be, don't get mad because I'm saying real stuff that you think in your mind. You know, he, he was already slow. Stop calling that child slow because he's going to be slow then. I call him a champion. You're my champion. Oh, you just got to look at it a little longer. That's all, because you're a good champion. You're a thorough champion. Are y'all with me? It's all in how you see that. I, I tell the story about when I was teaching here, I had a Chinese student, couldn't speak a word of English. Every time I said I was teaching her science in eighth grade, and every time I said, who wants to read, guess whose hand went up? And we would be on a spanking paragraph. He wants to read a paragraph. I want everybody to read a paragraph. I'll cut it down to three sentences. Because he would be, duh. And every time I say, who wants to read? Guess whose hand went up? He may have just finished reading. By the end of the semester, he was reading like me. Did he hear me? And I talked to him afterwards. He came from China, didn't know any English. He says, I said, what, what, what moves you? He said, it's a privilege to be here. God has brought me here, and I want to take every opportunity that God gives me. Are you with me? I would look at him and say, you're a great student. Kids would be laughing. He's still raising his hand and saying, you're a great student. That's all that. You're too slow. You can't do that. No, I didn't say that. You'd be surprised what people can do when you give them encouragement. Yeah, right. Amen? <laughs> You'd be surprised. Well, people and what they rise up to when you see greatness in them when they can't see it in themselves. Anybody can see greatness in somebody once they achieve a goal. Come on. Come on. But what makes you a great leader is when, you, when folk are in the mess and dirt, yeah. and I'm talking about you can't even see. They're they, they, they looking totally cold. You can't even see the diamond. Yeah. How many know a diamond comes from coal? Yeah. And the only thing that separates a piece of coal from a diamond is heat and pressure and the test of time. And so when you can see them with all that muck and mire and dirt and say, man, you're great. You're great. I choose to call those things to be not as though they were. I'm not moved by what I see. I may be tempted to say certain things, but I ain't going to say it. See, God looked at the, took the son of man, Ezekiel, in 37 to the, to the valley of dry bones. He says, what do you see? These bones are dry. They're very dry. And then he asks us a question, because God always speaks to us in questions. He says, can these bones live? And he says, they can live if you say so, Lord. He says, I know what I'm saying, but what are you saying? He says, well, I guess they can live. He says, well, if they can live, you start prophesying to the bones. He didn't say go find a church where they can lay hands and prophesy to you. He says, no, you get into your word, and you begin to prophesy the word of the Lord. Amen? Amen? See, let your meditation be about the Lord. His works, his word, his promises, his goodness, his love. Joshua 1 and 8. Joshua 1 and 8. Highlight this in your book. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall what? Meditate in it what? Day and night. Morning and night. 
that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make what? Your way what? Prosperous. How many want to walk in prosperity? It's more than just having money in your bank account. That's a part of it, but that's not all of it. It's about having peace. Amen? Prosperous. See, many of us are, have been prosperous, but, 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 but we can't show it. We're like in Haggai. We haven't considered our ways. So guess what? We can't enjoy the prosperity that God's trying to bring us into. But prosperity is when you have all your needs supplied by God and you're able to fulfill the will of God for your life. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Amen. And then you what? Will have good success. But it says be strong and, and good courage. See, he said, be strong and what? Encourage yourself in God. Mm -hmm. This was Joshua faced with a big task. Moses had just passed. He was at a low point in his life. He was depressed. He was down. And the word of the Lord came and said, man, meditate on my word. Trust my word and watch what happens. Go to the next one, please. See, we have thought, oh, God, look at Psalm 48. I got some scriptures here. Please write these scriptures down that reemphasize why we need to meditate on the word of God. Everybody say, meditate. Come on, that was weak. Say meditate, meditate. On, the word of God. on the word of God. Psalm 48 and 9, it says, we have thought, O God, on your loving kindness in the midst of your temple. While you in church, stop thinking about the roast. 